All right, so would you tell us about your professional background and your career path, including your SAS books? Uh, yes, um, I've, um, well, my, my uh, undergraduate degree, uh, Bachelor's of Science is in Applied Math. Uh, I've got a Master's in Bioengineering, and I've always, always had a strong interest in applying my programming mathematical skills in the, in the medical field. And so I uh, specialized in uh, computer applications uh, in the med medical field, and I got uh, into uh, medical device industry and got involved in clinical studies. So uh, with that, I started using SAS at a very uh, early stage, uh, using it, uh, the power of it, for the data management, doing the analysis and a lot of uh, conducting uh, quite a few studies uh, with that. Of course, proving that uh, the various devices uh, are safe and effective. And along the way, uh, I have attended quite a few uh, SAS conferences and uh, during that time, I was able to uh, have the opportunity to uh, teach a class on SAS. Uh, this particular topic was on uh, SAS certification. Um, and because of the strong interest that, uh, that my students had from that, um, I had the idea to convert that uh, class material, the course material, into a, into a book. And at that time, uh, there was no uh, resource available to help uh, guide or prepare students to prepare for the SAS certification exam. So I kind of put that together to help myself prepare for the certification exam and use that to, to pass the exam. So I was very uh, happy to have that as uh, being one of my books. And another book that I wrote uh, had to do with uh, ODS. And again, this was based off of a class that, that I taught at the uh, Western Users SAS, SAS conference. That one of the first ones that I attended was uh, 1994. Uh, I've been a regular uh, attendee of that. So. Uh, I uh, submitted a, a proposal, and uh, that was also uh, that was published by uh, SAS Institute uh, called Quick Results with the Alpha Delivery System. Oh, incredible. So it sounds like you've had a lot of experience with the teaching as well as the education. So from that, I'm going to ask you what your three most valuable tips, techniques, or strategies to become a top SAS programmer would be. Okay, great. Yeah, I think, I think that um, one of the things that, uh, that, that I admire and, and that I always uh, look forward to is, uh, is it will continuous learning. Uh, you might have noticed I have quite a few uh, blogs on various topics and uh, the way I've done that is because uh, I have a strong interest in mastering the concepts. So one of my first blog was to compare and contrast where versus if and uh, I want to do that because I saw there's some similarities and there's some cases that uh, one, uh, one approach was used instead of the other. And so uh, I put together a blog based on research that I did. So I think uh, one of the things that uh, top SAS programmers need to do is constantly look for ways to uh, enhance their skill set. Take a look at the blogs that are, that are posted. I put together a blog on that. I've also compared and contrast put and input. Um, another one that I put together is on uh, uh, creating group descriptive statistics using uh, PROC SQL. So continuous learning would be uh, one uh, tip, tip that I would suggest. Uh, making use of, of metadata. Metadata is one of those concepts that uh, kind of, uh, when you think about it, people may think that it's more of an advanced, uh, advanced topic. Uh, while it is very powerful, there are some ways that you can get started using metadata that's not so advanced, but really more of a smarter approach to doing programming because then things are, are data dependent, they're much more robust. So I would say that um, the second thing is making full use of, of metadata. And when we're talking about that is we're talking about maybe creating a data set that will help uh, dynamically create, for example, uh, the format catalog. That's one of the first things that I would recommend uh, people, uh, programs to do, getting their feet wet with metadata, is to see how the construction of the format catalog can be done by data set. And then, of course, the, the dictionary tables available that uh, provide uh, information on data sets and variables. Again, that can be used with the macro programming techniques to make full use. It's more intelligent type processing because then we know uh, whether variables are numeric character and uh, other information such as the, the length. And we could do some more processing with that. Now, the third thing that I would recommend is making full use of, of various uh, online and wiki tools. Uh, for example, uh, taking uh, full advantage of features such as uh, you know, training that's being uh, provided, any webinars, and any any uh, wiki tools. I've put together a website which I 
I use regularly as a, as a consultant, um, and uh, which is uh, sassavvy.com, and basically it's a great uh, resource. Uh, there's quite a few uh, people who are members of it, and uh, you want to be able to utilize a lot of the resources that are available, whether it's from SAS's, SAS's page or uh, Lex Jensen's uh, website, where you have access information to uh, various conferences, because there's a, a tremendous amount of, of code uh, that's that's available and tips and, and summarize information and what I've done is uh, just like um, notes uh, people are very familiar with notes where you have a collection of bookmarks you know favorite books marks where you can get a lot of useful information I've consolidated that into this kind of wiki tool where I can actually look up information uh, there's a keyword search feature in there so instead of the traditional top-down approach uh, where people will go through the Google I can go into uh, SAS Savvy, for example, and type in my keyword, and from there I'll have organized information on um, if, on the topic that I want any type of troubleshooting. So it makes me much more productive. So I would say those are the three things that I would recommend uh, programmers to uh, to work on to advance in their career, become top programmers. All right, fantastic. Uh, so now we're going to move to a little bit more open question, one that will hopefully be fun for you, and that is, what is your favorite SAS procedure? Yeah, um, I think my um, my favorite SAS procedure uh, would have to be would have to be Proc SQL. Uh, initially, when I started off uh, working with SAS, uh, I got very familiar with a lot of the procedures, and in fact, uh, one of them uh, I actually wrote the code. Uh, to do, and then I realized, oh, there's a procedure for that, which is a proc transpose. So I got some uh, nice inside information as to the backgrounds to proc transpose. But uh, then I soon, soon realized after that that proc SQL uh, is really one of those procedures that stands above uh, practically any other procedure. And that's mainly because proc SQL is the only procedure that is closest to the power of the data step. Everybody knows that the data step is uh, something that uh, you can write any type of logic and you have the full power of SAS. Outside of the data step, PROC SQL is, is, that, is that procedure where you can um, combine data sets together, you can do simple queries, you can put filters, and uh, it's the PROC SQL, uh, one of the blogs that I wrote on that, um, is uh, something that also gave a presentation at SAS conferences, which is to dynamically create group descriptive statistics. Now, this was something that I was uh, doing outside of Proc SQL, and it took several steps to do it, uh, several data steps, several procedures, and I thought there must be a better way. And I knew a little bit about Proc SQL, but I was really pushing Proc SQL to, to the limit when I wanted it to do several things, multitasking. So I just did some experimenting. And I was really uh, amazed to find out that in one simple, pro one simple pass, one simple procedure uh, using Proc SQL, I was able to basically uh, replicate what I was doing with data steps of procedures that took maybe four steps. And to me, that really shows the, the full power, the full flexibility that Proc SQL has. So I would say that would be uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, procedures. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, I just have one more question, and that's if you have any closing words for us. Well, uh, I would say that uh, uh, I know uh, being a SaaS programmer, it's been a very exciting film also in the pharmaceutical industry, and um, SaaS has a, a, a lot of tools available to us in the pharmaceutical industry uh, using uh, Proc Report. And so I would definitely encourage you to seek out uh, answers, um, if whatever level you are, um, in whatever industry, uh, there's there's answers for you, um, and there's just, uh, there's ways to sign up for getting information on a, on your procedure, on your uh, question that you have. So take advantage of signing up for these things, and that way you can kind of progress. And then um, I think as uh, you'll find, if you haven't had a chance to attend any SAS conference, you definitely want to do that. You can do that at a very local level and regional, and then maybe going up to international. In addition, there's SAS conferences for your particular industry, and that really focuses on that particular niche. So, for example, I would go to pharmaceutical industry, uh, the pharma sub, uh, but there are others, uh, for example, the insurance, 
Uh, so you may want to take a look at that, and these are fantastic opportunities for you to, you know, for example, take your code, uh, take any challenges that you have, uh, talk with experts, talk with uh, SAS Institute employees. Uh, they're more than willing to uh, listen and help you and uh, you know, solve the technical problems that uh, we encounter. So thank you very much for this opportunity.